Hello and welcome to Villa View. I'm Paul Bradley and I'm joined on the phone now by Aston Villa correspondent Matt Kendrick. Hi Matt. Hello there. Um, well, let's just start off today's show by talking about um, a piece you've written in the paper this week about Villa's um, pretty much of a dodgy disciplinary record really. Um, just tell us where Villa stand at the moment and how worrying this disciplinary record is. No, I don't think there's any, any need to be too alarmed. I mean, the, the, the thing I would say is that because the, the squad is kind of not stretched, but because it, it's, it's fairly compact in terms of the senior professionals and they can't really afford too many players to get banned, um, particularly during this kind of glut of games where they play Man United, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea, Bolton, Stoke, etc. Um, they need they need their A their A A side bringing their A game if you like for for those matches. Um, but I think I think the, the main concern would probably be Gabby Monahor who's on four bookings. Uh, he, he's obviously been, obviously been the star of the show so far this season. So he's one booking away from a one match ban. Um, likewise, Dillian Petrov. Um, and then I think these these three or four players on on three bookings. So um, uh, Fabian Tell, Fallon Hutton, uh, Richard Dunn, and, and James Collins. So I think the man, what the manager said in the paper, paper this week is that um, he doesn't want to take the aggression away from his players. He still wants them to be as competitive and a, as committed as ever, but he just wants them to do it in a more controlled manner, which is sensible advice, really. Now, some Villa fans, well, a lot of Villa fans at the moment, I think it's fair to say, are a little bit depressed at the form Villa are showing. That, that poor game against um, Spurs and a little bit of a difficult game as well as against Swansea where they, they weren't at their best. And then this really difficult run coming up now, um, Arsenal, Liverpool, Manchester United, Bolton and Stoke, both those games are away. Um, is there anything, any words of kind of uh, consolation, but any words of kind of confidence you can give to Villa fans to say there is, there is some light at the end of the tunnel here? <laughs> I think I think there's some um, some items being discounted in the club shop. Um, that's a positive. Um, now, I, who knows? I mean, I, I think I think Alex McLeish really needs to 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 lift his players to to pull out a big result somewhere along the line. And by that I mean getting a victory over one of the one of the the big four. Um, You'd probably think the chances of doing that would be would be better against I don't know perhaps perhaps Liverpool at home than than they would have against any any of the others. Um, but I think they need to they need to pull out a victory against one of one of the big boys, and I think they need um, I think they need to, to take points off Bolton and and, um, and Stoke as well with, with a victory in there. Um, if they could glean six points, six or seven points from from a really daunting December schedule, then I, I think that would set them set them up nicely for the new year. But um, I must admit, I, I, I'm not, not entirely confident that they'll get anywhere near that six, but we'll have to see. You'll have to ask me uh, at the start of January. And the other accusation that's been made by some Villa fans against the Villa players at the moment is that the passion's not there. They, they don't really seem to care at the moment. From your impression of talking to some of the Villa players in the tunnel and, and interviewing them pre-match, What's the what's the kind of sort of reaction that you've had from the players from from those those sort of accusations? I don't think it's I don't think it's a case that they don't care. Um, I certainly haven't seen that. I can see I can see where the accusations come from post Tottenham because they did seem that much off the pace that it seemed as if they weren't committed. But I don't think I think they were just a bit a bit kind of um, stunned against Tottenham, to say the truth, and, and a bit frightened. I don't think it's a lack of passion or commitment. Um, I do think there's been too many below par performances um, collectively in games and from individuals. Uh, some big players have, have let the manager down, um, and equally, I think, I think a couple of decisions that he he could have made uh, made differently. But um, I, don't, I think it's harsh to say that, that people at the club don't care. Okay. Well, let's let's move on and try and find a positive before the end of the uh, before the end of the show. And um, what's the latest news on Happy Bay and uh, if he's going to be coming back to Villa or not? <laughs> Very mischievous, yeah. Um, there's a, an interview had it by Gaze um, up in Yorkshire. He's obviously gone on gone on loan to um, to Doncaster, um, saying that he doesn't want to come back um, and he'd rather stay at Doncaster for the rest of the season. Um, I think Villa fans would probably echo those sentiments, and so would so would people in uh, pe- the people in power at Villa as well. Um, Happy Bay, I've met him a couple of times. And he, surprisingly, he seems like a thoroughly decent chap when you speak to him, but there's no denying the fact that he's been a, a real drain on, on Villa's resources for the last two and a half years. I think he's supposed to pick up in the region £42,000 a week. Uh, in return for that, I think he's played 15 games, I think, 15 games, a couple of substitute appearances. I think um, his grand... Um, 
his grand total this this season under Matrice, I think I think he's played three minutes. Um, so it's not bad work if you can get it. So if he doesn't come back, I don't think there'll be too too many people shedding tears. Um, the only problem being that I think Doncaster are play, paying a very small amount towards his wages, so um, Villa will effectively be subsidising him to play for somebody else um, for the rest of the season if that happens. I think ideal scenario was, would be that somebody would buy him or he'd be allowed to leave on a free in January um, and then they'd get him entirely off the wage bill, but I think um, I can't see that happening. OK, Matt, well, look, thanks for your thoughts again today uh, about all that's going on at Villa Park. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in again. We'll be back again next week with more Villa View.